So far, we have a working Next.js app with a GraphQL API built using Apollo Server and Nexus. And we also define a query using Nexus that returns all links that we have in our database. Now, the next step is actually send a query from the client to our API, get the data, and display it. So to do that, we'll be using Apollo Client. Now, Apollo Client is a GraphQL client. This is a library that makes it easier when working uh, with GraphQL APIs. So GraphQL clients handle stuff like caching, updating the UI, pagination, and just so much more. So if you're going to work with a GraphQL API, you should definitely consider using uh, a GraphQL client. Now, there are many GraphQL clients out there. There's like GraphQL request, which is minimal, but it works. There's also Urkel and there's uh, Apollo client. And there, are, I believe there are other ones, but for this course and for our app, we'll be using Apollo client. So the first thing we need to do is actually install it. So just say npm install up at Apollo slash client. And in the lib folder, what we want to do is actually create a new file and call it apollo.ts. And in this file, we will say import Apollo client from Apollo client and also import in memory cache. This is so that Apollo caches um, like the result after sending a query. And we will just say const Apollo client. Let's make it like client equals new Apollo client. And this will take an object where we specify two fields, the URI. So what is the uh, URL of the, or like URI of the GraphQL endpoint that we're interacting with. So we will just say HTTP colon slash localhost colon 3000 slash API slash GraphQL. Now double check this uh, string because if you actually mess it up, you won't be able to uh, query your GraphQL API. Ask me, like I ran into this issue before and it just kept going around in circles when in reality, um, the issue was just a wrong URL. So it just says localhost 3000 slash API slash GraphQL. And then we'll just say cache equals in memory cache and we'll just call this function and say new in memory cache. And that's it. So uh, now what we need to do is just say export default Apollo client. Now, what we want to do is go to the global app component. So in the pages folder underscore app.tsx and we want to wrap our app with the Apollo provider so that we can send queries from just any component that we have. So we can just say import Apollo provider from at Apollo slash client. And we also want to import, I believe this is a named import. So we also want to import the Apollo client instance that we created. So we'll just say import Apollo client from dot dot slash lib slash Apollo and wrap our app with the Apollo provider, which takes a prop called client, and we will pass Apollo client to it. So now we're ready to actually send queries from our front end. So let's go to the index page, and now we're going to replace this hard-coded data with um, a, so like we will have a GraphQL query and we will send this query to our API. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually import GQL and use query hook from Apollo client. And we will use this use query hook to just um, handle sending the query, handling the loading states and in case we have any errors. So what we actually want to do is actually define the GraphQL query. So I'll just paste it here. And we have a variable called all links query. And this just contains the links query uh, that we have in our API. We will return the ID, the title, URL, description, image URL, and category. Now it depends on what type of data you want. You can modify uh, this query however you like. 
And then in the home function, we will just say const and we have an object equals use query and we will pass the all links query. Now, use query returns to us um, data. This is the return data um, after running the query. We also have error and we have loading. So loading and error are very useful uh, for handling uh, like loading states and error states. So we can just say if loading, um, we will return um, saying like just a p tag and say loading and just say boom. And we can also say if error, we will return again, just the paragraph and say, oops, something went wrong. And we will display the error by saying error dot message. And now instead of um, like, so like right now we're looping over hard coded data, we want to use data uh, and we'll just say data dot links. Let's, let's add just for um, like, you know, so that we don't run into errors. Let's just add um, optional chaining. So now if we hit save and so like right now we're not using the hard coded data anymore and we hit save and we run our app and say npm run dev and go to localhost 3000, we should be able to have data fetch from our API. We should be able to see data fetch from our database and it works. So like if we refresh, you'll see this loading indicator appear and disappear very quickly because we don't have many links. And that's it. We just set up Apollo client and sent a query to our API and displayed the data on the front end, which is really cool.